It was a strange coincidence, I said. But it wasn't a coincidence at all. Why not? Gatsby bought that house so that Daisy would be just across the bay. Then it had not been merely the stars to which he had aspired on that June night. He came alive to me, delivered suddenly from the womb of his purposeless splendor. He wants to know, continued Jordan, if you'll invite Daisy to your house some afternoon and then let him come over. The modesty of the demand shook me. He had waited five years and bought a mansion where he dispensed starlight to casual moths so that he could come over some afternoon to a stranger's garden. Did I have to know all this before he could ask such a little thing? He's afraid. He's waited so long. He thought you might be offended. You see, he's regular tough underneath it all. Something worried me. Why didn't he ask you to arrange a meeting? He wants her to see his house, she explained, and your house is right next door. Oh, I think he half expected her to wander into one of his parties some night, went on Jordan, but she never did. Then he began asking people casually if they knew her, and I was the first one he found. It was that night he sent for me at his dance, and you should have heard the elaborate way he worked up to it. Of course, I immediately suggested a luncheon in New York, and I thought he'd go mad. I don't want to do anything out of the way, he kept saying. I want to see her right next door. When I said you were a particular friend of Tom's, he started to abandon the whole idea. He doesn't know very much about Tom, though he says he's read a Chicago paper for years on the chance of catching a glimpse of Daisy's name. It was dark now, and as we dipped under a little bridge, I put my arm around Jordan's golden shoulder and drew her toward me and asked her to dinner. Suddenly, I wasn't thinking of Daisy and Gatsby anymore but of this clean, hard, limited person who dealt in universal skepticism and who leaned back jauntily just within the circle of my arm. A phrase began to beat in my ears with a sort of heady excitement. There are only the pursued, the pursuing, the busy, and the tired. That is from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald in this shiny and beautiful Penguin edition. It is your Sunday Penguin for the day. Yes, it's your Sunday Penguin, The Great Gatsby, which was written in 1925, only one year before the splendid Vaughn Manor was built. So, a rousing, mysterious tale of the Jazz Age, the great Gatsby, about the mysterious young millionaire, Jay Gatsby. Who is this guy? Where'd this guy come from? Where'd he get all his dough? Why does he have so many parties anyway? What's this guy after, this Gatsby? We find all this out and more. So this is a masterpiece of American literature. You'd never know it from what some of the folks on Booktube say. Apparently some people just don't get this book. I've come to that conclusion. This is a great book. F. Scott Fitzgerald was a great writer. Beautifully written book. Magnificent prose and an excellent story about the mysterious Jay Gatsby. This book is about a lot of interesting things, and it's got a few interesting characters. It's got some real jerks in this story, that's for sure, and it doesn't show rich people to a very in a very good light. Of course it doesn't. But it's pretty fascinating. Now, this story is about Jay Gatsby, but it's told by his neighbor, uh which is Nick. Nick is a guy, and he's a guy who's writing this story. So he's telling the story. Uh, and he's not the kind of writer that Fitzgerald is, which is interesting. Uh, he doesn't have Fitzgerald's success, for one thing. 
And he's telling this story about Gatsby. And one thing you, you pick up on fairly quickly is that not only is he fascinated by Gatsby and intrigued by Gatsby, but he really cares for Gatsby. He loves Gatsby, basically. Gatsby is a really interesting guy. He's really mysterious. What is he after? Well, he's after Daisy, of course. Years before, when Gatsby was a soldier, an officer, he met young Daisy and they fell in love. But they were separated. Daisy eventually married another guy. Gatsby is determined to get Daisy back. Now, why he wants Daisy at all is a little bit of a mystery because Daisy doesn't seem all that, if you get what I'm saying. But you get the sense that Gatsby doesn't want Daisy just for Daisy. He wants her because of what she represents. And this goes to the heart of what Gatsby is and who Gatsby is. Now, all along, you get the sense that Gatsby isn't what he's trying to re represent himself to be. Now, he's obviously super rich, this guy. But he wasn't born to wealth, you start to suspect. He starts telling uh, Nick some stories that just sound totally bogus. I mean, it's pretty obvious that he's just kind of telling tales. And so it, Nick starts to wonder, well, who is this guy really? How did he come up with his dough? Where did he get these riches from? Where is he really from, this guy? Well, we get all of those answers in this book. And it's all about a bunch of different things. It's about wealth itself. Fitzgerald famously was fascinated by money. Uh, that was partially just who he was that was partially when he when he uh when he lived you know he experienced the roaring 20s and wealth was a big part of that uh wealth gave you value as a person even if as a person you were kind of crap so money was important and at the same time being a smart guy he kind of saw through it uh, and so your character, your main character, Nick, sees through all these crappy rich people and sees the crappy rich people as the crap that they were, just as he sees through Jay Gatsby. But he sees something more in Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby is kind of pathetic and he's kind of admirable at the same time. He's got some admirable, admirable qualities. He's kind of... A, a sort of dark version of the American dream. The American dream that we can all just be whatever we want to be. If we work hard enough, we can achieve whatever goal uh, we might have for ourselves. Yeah, you can do that, but maybe sometimes you have to do some pretty shady things to reach those goals. Sometimes maybe you have to do some well, maybe some criminal things if you want to reach those goals. Maybe at least you feel like you have to do those things. And so if you really determine to reach a specific goal, well, maybe you're going to do that stuff, shady as it might be. But sadly, the thing about Gatsby is that he kind of reaches his goals but really doesn't. He can never reach his goals because of who and what he is and how he got to where, you know, how he got to his riches. Uh, he's always going to be on the outside as much as he wants to be on the inside. Uh, but his determination to reach these goals, that is kind of admirable. Uh, he is a guy who's fixated. I mean, he's not going to let anything stop him from achieving what he wants to achieve, which is kind of his downfall in a way. You start to realize, you know, if this guy were just like a little more normal and didn't have this, you know, I can make of myself any, I can make myself anything I want to be kind of attitude. Well, 
maybe his life wouldn't be crap and it would have ended up better. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this book. And this is one of those books, you know, where you can come back to it every few years and you can get something new and different out of it. A particular, particular ah, I can't speak, particularly if you're at a different stage in your life uh, when you read it. If you read this as a young, young person, you're going to see different things in it. Um, you're probably going to admire Gatsby a little bit more. Maybe you'll relate to Gatsby a little bit more. Uh, when you get older, you're kind of like, this guy. Um, but it's interesting in that way. Brilliantly written, uh, I think. I think the prose is great. It's not overly ornate. Uh, it, tells the, it tells the story very well. And it's just a cool little book. Uh, definitely a classic. I mean, the reason this has gone down or come down as a classic is because it's a classic. It really is. Uh, of course, this is the cover that we all know. Here's the guy himself. This guy's almost as handsome as I am. Almost. But this is the classic cover. And this is the extra fancy penguin volume that Justin at this Justin got for me as a present. Thanks, Justin. This is really cool. And this is one of my favorite books. I don't think this is his favorite book. I have his favorite, my favorite book of uh, his up there, Tender is the Night. Uh, I think Tender is the Night is the better book. As good as this is, I don't think it's as good as Tender is the Night. Tender is the Night. I think is the best book this guy ever wrote. Had to think about that one, but really, eh, Tender is the Night. Tender is the Night wins. I don't have a penguin of that though. I don't know if one exists, at least not yet. Probably eventually, uh, but definitely I should talk about that book one of these days. But this is pretty darn good. So yeah, The Great Gatsby. It's better than all those other booktubers say. This book is fantastic. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow doing something different tomorrow. Christmas Carol, chapter one. Uh, myself and some other booktubers are going to be reading the whole Christmas Carol. And uh, Mark at Book Time with Elvis foolishly asked me to read the first chapter. So that should be extra melodramatic and fun. So I will catch you then if you care to join me. I will see you next time here at Stately Fawn Manor. Bye guys.